Now, demons are a representation of, you know, most people don't like to hear the word demon. It kind of frightens them. Reminds them of, uh, you know, what's that? Or she spins her head, you know. <laughs> the omen or whatever it is, or exorcist, or, you know. And uh, people just, you know, they like watching it, but they're afraid. Isn't it amazing how people like to watch that stuff, but yet they're afraid when they watch it? <laughs> well, <clears throat> The word demon is a representation of the word shadow. It means, or spirit. And if you ever notice that um, you can sense something or something out of the corner of your eye, you say, man, I swore something was there. But you didn't see it, but you just like saw a shadow out of the corner of your eye and you just thought, well, you know, I'm just seeing a reflection of something or somewhere. And I'm not saying that sometimes it's not, but majority of the time it's a present of a spirit. And uh, we'll get a little bit more into this. Before we can really get going, I need to lay a foundation for understanding so that we can go forth to find out where these demons came from. Now, let's start with Genesis 1, okay? Let's start right from the beginning. You have your sheets there that has the three worlds on there. Demons. Spirits. They're known as unclean spirits. Deceiving spirits. Familiar spirits. Seducing spirits. They're all the same. Uh, even the spirit of Antichrist is a representation of a demonic spirit. And in verse 1, together, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. I want you to understand something, that the word beginning means time. In other words, in the beginning God, in the beginning God set a standard time. He said, okay, I'm going to start something. So when he starts something, it means he's going to complete something. If something has a beginning, it has a end. Okay? In the beginning, God created the heavens. No, in other words, uh, the heavenly host, the spiritual realm, He created. Remember, the angels weren't there forever, were they? God had to create them. So in the beginning, He set a standard time when He decided to reveal Himself as Father, He reveal Himself as Trinity, and reveal Himself. The first thing he created was heavenly hosts, sons of God. Okay? In the beginning, the Bible says. In the beginning. Which means there's a beginning and there's an end. In the beginning, he created the heavens. You notice the word heavens is first. And the earth. The earth is representation of second. In other words, material things. Matter. Okay? So in the beginning, he created the heaven and the earth. Now, before we go any further, I want you to keep an eye on Genesis 1, but I want you to go to Isaiah 45, 18. And so we're going to go right back to Genesis. I want to show you something very important. Now, God is perfect, isn't he? Create something that was messed up, would he? No. And in Isaiah 45, in verse 18, I believe it is, in, verse, in 45, verse 18, it says, For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create in vain, it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. So God would not create something in vain, would he? He would create everything in perfection. So I want you to understand something. Let's go back to Genesis 1. That between the, the first two verses of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 is a gap. There is a gap of time. Because the Bible says in Genesis 1.1 1, 1, that God created the heavens and the earth. We just read in Isaiah 45.18 that he doesn't create anything in vain. So what he creates is perfect. So I want you to you notice that your sheet, it says the original earth. That original earth was created with me. It was created perfect. Now let's go to verse 2 and it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now understand this. It says that the earth was out form and void. In other words, it was like in vain. Now God didn't create it that way, did he? Something had to happen for the earth to become void, without form and darkness. Something had to happen. Now, it doesn't explain to you what happened, does it? But it does in the Word of God. 
Only by the Spirit of God will you understand these things. And that's why it's so important that we invite the Holy Spirit, who's our teacher. Now, so something had to happen. I want to go a little bit further so we, we get more understanding. Let's go to verse 3. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there is a representation of restore or restoration. Because the Arata would say created. Is everybody with me? So let's go back to your first three pictures here. You see that the original earth which God created was perfect. It was called the original. The chaotic earth was a representation of one that was without form and void. Then the Lord decided to restore the earth. And that's what the earth we're in now. The present earth. Because the word let there be is a representation of restore. Because something was already there. So let's, let's go to the part now where we know that there was an original earth and what was going on on the original earth. And then let's go to the part where there was a chaotic earth and then the present earth that we're on now. All right, so we're going to go a little bit deeper here. But like I said, before we can get to demons, we need to find out from the beginning exactly what God was trying to tell us from the beginning. Now let's um, go to Nika a little bit ahead here. We know that the earth was made perfect and God was utilizing the earth. And I'll show you how he was utilizing the earth. The earth was a representation of the mountain of God of the universe. Everybody hear me. The earth was a representation of the mountain of God of the universe. Okay. In Ezekiel 28 and verse 12. Now it says, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyra and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Now you got to understand the scriptures. He's not talking originally about a king, earthly king. He was talking about a spiritual king or a spiritual prince. Okay, these are known as principalities. Or a prince, the word prince means originator. That's why Satan is known as the prince of darkness. He's the originator of darkness. Okay, let's go on a little further. It says, you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now we know that no human except for Jesus and of course Adam was the seal of perfection. Full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Well, then talk about Adam being perfect in beauty and full of wisdom. Is everybody with me? But he was made per perfect. Now he had God's wisdom and God was teaching Adam, but it wasn't something that was established immediately. So God created someone or something that was perfect and beautiful, full of wisdom. Let's go to verse 13. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the braille, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. Now, this was this individual's covering. Does everybody understand that? Now, if this is his covering, where do these emeralds and jewels and gold come from? From the earth. Does everybody see this? So this was his covering. Now, if you were to look at a vest that had all of these coverings, you know, just to get, put, a, put a picture there, somebody had a vest with all of these coverings, I mean, that's where they were, they were come. In other words, these were the precious things, weren't they? Somebody who was a ruler over this earth had to have these precious Jewels. Is everybody with me? Okay. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Now, there, you know that there was no human that was done that way. Verse 14. You were the anointed cherub. Now, cherub is a representation of a high-ranking angel. Who covers. I established you. You were on the what? Holy mountain of God. Mm, what, God. What mountain was that? The earth. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Does everybody understand this? This was a cherub, a high-ranking angel who was covered with the stones, the stones of the earth. He had timbrels and pipes. So he was known as Lucifer. 
He was the highest ranking angel, higher than Archangel Michael and Gabriel. He was God's right hand man. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe for God. God breathed through him and they worshiped and all the angels worshiped. That's why the earth was a representation of God's holy mountain. Well, they were here. It was like a playground for the angels of God. It was like a playground for the sons of God. This was like, you know, God's backyard right here. So Lucifer was the head here. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. Is everybody with me? Okay. Now, let's go to, um, hallelujah, Isaiah 65. While we're here. Isaiah 65. Speak a little bit more about this mountain. So things were a lot different than what we realize sometimes. <clears throat> Isaiah 65 and verse 24. Isaiah 65 and verse 24. Now I want you to understand something that the original writings of the Bible, there were no chapters and verses. When it was translated, chapters and verses came into play. So the Bible was written originally by, the, by God. It was translated by man. That's why some things are removed and so forth. That's why you still have Greek words in the Bible when it's supposed to be all English. Because the word Christ means anointed one. The word Christ is actually a Greek word, isn't it? But it's supposed to mean anointed one. So... I believe that the Lord allowed this so that in our time, the only way we would understand this word and its true effect was by the Spirit of God. In other words, you had to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit because he is the author. And if you don't know the author, you won't understand his book. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Okay, in Isaiah 65 and verse 24, and it says, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Now, we know that this is what's going to come to pass after the tribulation and after God brings back the earth again in, in order. Let's go on. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? So we see here God talks about the earth being his footstool. So earth had a special play in God's creation, didn't it? In fact, we see that even heaven and earth are connected. God's heaven was his throne room and the earth was his footstool. So you understand that earth had a specific part in God's creation of play and his purpose and his will. Lucifer was known as the high archangel that was the praise and worship leader. He was ruler of this earth, okay? Let's go a little further. Isaiah 14 and verse 12. Hallelujah. Now the word Lucifer means morning star. Lucifer means morning star. In fact, it's spelled L-U-C, L-U-C-I-F-E-R, Lucifer. Now, what does the word lucky come from? Lucifer, lucky. Hmm. Man, you're real lucky. No, I'm blessed. Do you understand how he changes everything around? <laughs> That's why we don't say we're lucky. We're blessed. Ain't no such thing as luck. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. Okay, in verse 12. <laughs> How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. Well, why would he want to ascend into heaven? Because he was ruler of the earth. Does everybody get it? So you'd say, I want to ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You notice that there's a lot of eyes there? Ay, 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 ay. 
Amen. Yet you shall be brought down the Sheol, which means hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. And we know that Lucifer is going to be bound for a thousand years in the lowest parts of the pit. <laughs> so we see here, it's talking about Lucifer, isn't it? How he has what? Fallen. Something happened, didn't he? Well, he exalted himself above God. And the Lord said, you're out of here. That's it. This is why the original earth closed down. Because Lucifer was removed from his office. And the earth was closed down. Does everybody get it? Now go back to Genesis. And I'll show you. Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1. And in verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? If I'm moving too fast, let me know. After we move, after we finish, let me know. <laughs> okay, in verse 2, let's read this, okay, together. The earth was out form and void. Now listen, what does Lucifer represent? Darkness, doesn't he? Now look at where the Lord, now look at where the, his throne is at now. And darkness was on the face of what? The deep. Hello? And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, so at some period of time, the Lord decided to restore the earth, didn't he? And the Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So the Holy Spirit came to the earth. When the Holy Spirit showed up to the earth, things began to happen. What was he doing? He was hovering over the earth. Now the Bible says sin doesn't dwell with God, does it? So where do you think Lucifer went? In the earth. Because the Holy Spirit is a representation of light. So where did Lucifer go? In the earth. Where is hell? In the, in the earth, isn't it? That's why he has a throne room there. That's his throne room, hell. Okay, didn't we read that the Lord was going to send him there? Well, that's where he sent him. He's in hell. That's his throne room. It doesn't mean he doesn't have access to the atmosphere and the heavenlies. He does. In fact, he has to report to God every once in a while when the Lord allows him to come to his throne room to report. Other than that, he cannot go to his throne room unless he's called. He has not access there anymore unless he's called. Is everybody with me? So he does it. He's known the prince of power of air, isn't he? So he has access in the heavenlies, doesn't he? Now you've got to remember, he's an archangel. And in one second, an angel can cruise around this earth seven times. So he can get in places where, uh, <laughs> you know, we think, well, how can he? And the Bible says that he's not omnipresent, is he? Now understand that the word Satan is a representation of the name of his kingdom. Satan is an individual, but... Satan is not everywhere. In other words, the same thing as Jesus. Jesus is a representation of the kingdom of light or the kingdom of God. Satan is a representation of the kingdom of darkness. Okay? So when, um, when Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, was he actually really talking to Satan or one of his demons? He was talking to the demons, but they were, they were under the authority of who? Satan. So everybody understand. Okay? Because Satan, you're going to see, does not possess bodies because he's an angel. Okay, well, we'll go to that. I want to go with one more scripture in Psalm 24. Psalm 24, verse 3. Let's read this together. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or representation of the mountain of the Lord? Okay. Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Now, did Lucifer have clean hands and a pure heart? No. That's why he could not stand in that place any longer. <clears throat> Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully? Now that sounds like Lucifer, doesn't it? That's why he was removed. Okay? Let's go to Luke 10. Luke 10. Glory to God. And Luke chapter 10. Who can stand on the mountain of God and who can approach it? He who has a pure heart and clean hands. In Luke chapter 10, in verse 17, okay, <clears throat> and it says, And then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Does everybody hear that? It says that even the demons are subject to your name. Now we know that's a representation of what? Unclean spirits, foul and unclean spirits. Now, the 70 went out and they were casting out devils, weren't they? The Lord sent them out. Well, you may say, well, didn't they have the Holy Ghost? They didn't need to have the Holy Ghost. The Lord's feet were on the earth. Hmm. They didn't need to have the Holy Ghost. When he said, go and do it, they went. His hand was extended to them, okay? And it says, and that even demons, 
They came back and they told the Lord, you know, because the Lord sent them out. They came back and said, man, even the demons are subject to us. This is great casting out devils out of people and watching them change. In verse 18, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. See, he, he saw this, didn't he? Because he was there. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Powerful. So Jesus was explaining he saw the fall of Satan, didn't he? <laughs> and he was saying, and now he, he brought this back to the, you know, when his apostles came and they were all blessed, going, oh man, we cast out all these demons that are subject to us. And he said, he was explaining to them, yes, that's why, right, because Satan has fallen and I have given you dominion. Does everybody get it? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So again, let me reiterate this. As for the earth, the original earth, the chaotic earth, and the present or restored earth, a representation of Satan losing his office. Okay. Of course, he wants to re, re, uh, reestablish his office again, doesn't he? So, because that office was removed, when God decided to restore the earth, obviously he had a plan to put somebody else in office. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to Genesis. Oh, let's see here. Genesis something. I guess we can go to Genesis 1. Hallelujah. Now, again, I, I want to share that the, the, between the original earth and the chaotic earth, could be millions or billions of years old. We don't know. Could be thousands of years old. But when the Lord decided to restore the earth in the six days, because one day with the Lord is equal to a thousand years, when the Lord decided to restore the earth, we know that it's from from the time of Adam to now is six thousand years. So the present earth or the restored earth right right now is only six thousand years. In Genesis chapter one verse twenty six, and it says. Then God said, let us make man in our image. So we know that God was restoring the earth and he was putting somebody in office in his image and in his likeness. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created in his own image, in the image of God, he created him male and female he created them now you notice that we didn't see the word created until he created man everything else was let let there be, let there be. is everybody with me okay and except for in the first genesis 1 1 when it says god created the heavens and the earth the next time you see created is when he created man because create is a representation of original let there be means restore all right let's go to genesis 3 hallelujah now remember that, and I believe it was Isaiah, where it was, um, or Ezekiel, where the Lord had said, "And you were the the cherub and the anointed one, and you were in the garden of Eden." Well, we see here in, in verse one it says, "Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field." In chapter three, verse one of Genesis, that the Lord God had made, and He said to the woman, "Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of the tree of the garden?" Of every, of, every tree, of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now death is a representation of separation from God. So the woman knew, the serpent knew, the serpent obviously wanted Adam's office again. So the only way that he would get Adam's office is if he could get through the weaker vessel, his wife. Remember, because Eve came from Adam, an original state where God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Adam was the original likeness and image because God is male-female, isn't he? Adam was male-female, not in organs, but in character. Then the Lord put Adam to sleep and took the woman out of Adam. He didn't just create a woman, did he? He took the woman out of Adam. Okay? So we see that now Lucifer knew that because Adam was the head of the house, the Bible says if a house divided, it will not stand. So Lucifer convinced Eve to take 
the fruit. In fact, Adam was not there when Eve first bit the fruit. He took fruit and brought it to Adam and then fell. Now, the Bible tells us, let's go a little further. In verse 5, for, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Now, this is Lucifer telling, or actually Satan, known as the serpent now, because God even changed his name from Lucifer to Satan. Um, he's now, the, now Satan's talking to Eve, and he's saying, come on now, your eyes will be open. But in true reality, we know that her eyes would have been, will be closed to the things of the spirit realm, and they'll be open to the natural realm. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband, and he ate. So you got to understand, Satan was able to access Eve with a seed of corruption by eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, her eyes were not open to the natural realm and closed to the spiritual realm until Adam ate. And then both of their eyes were open to the natural realm and they lost sight of the spiritual realm and they no longer talked to God face to face. Hello? Okay. Now, because they were disobedient, right? Now, Satan now is able to take Adam's office, isn't he? Now he becomes ruler of the earth and he still is ruler of the earth. Now, at that period of time, you've got to understand something. That's why Satan is known as the prince of power of darkness. Because God did not create Adam and Eve to die and decay, did he? He created them for an eternal. He was calling the earth his garden. This was known as paradise. Okay, so he was restoring it. Okay. Now, when you bite an apple, doesn't it turn brown? Doesn't everything die and decay now? Well, because Satan, who is known as the originator of death because he was separated from God, everything dies now. Everything changes. All right? Now, there was had to become judgment on this. And if you go to verse 14, we see that something happened. Now, God was bringing judgment. And he said, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field, and on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust. Now, what are we made of? Dust. That's why he likes us. He said, you shall eat this all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, which means hatred, between you and the woman. The woman who? Eve. Or all of her offsprings. Now, we know this is also prophetic of the woman known as Israel. But this is down the road. And we also know as prophetic, known as the woman, Mary, and her, and, and her offspring. Okay? But Satan didn't know. And between, listen, your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now, come on. Now, listen for a second. This is very important. Because this is where it really begins to get heavy. <laughs> Lucifer knew... He had gained ruler. But he also knew that there would be hatred between his seed and her seed. Because everyone born is born into what? Darkness. You and I are born in sin, aren't we? From that time on. But Lucifer also knew that God was going to send a... Because it says here, and he will what? Bruise your head. Do you think if you knew someone was going to bruise your head that you would try and find out before it happened? <laughs> And he shall bruise his heel. Now we know that Jesus did that on the cross because they nailed his feet, didn't they? He bruised his heel. And of course, the beatings that he took as a representation. But we know that Jesus went to hell. So uh, for someone to bruise somebody else's head, they'd have to stand above them, wouldn't they? And wasn't the cross above hell? Okay. So Jesus went to hell and defeated the powers of darkness. So we know that Lucifer knew that seeds were going to come into the world, didn't he? So don't you think he'd try and stop those seeds from coming into the world? Hallelujah. Now let's get going. Are you ready? <laughs> now, now let's get going. Let's go to Genesis 6. Now let me ask you this question. During the time of Adam and Eve, since God restored everything, was all afresh, right? 
they calculated there was about 40% more oxygen on the Earth compared to... In fact, a lot of the bone structures and so forth that they found are a lot larger. In fact, Adam and Eve were even larger. They were bigger than what we were. Now, you know how to, you notice how animals, when they have children, they usually have more than one. You know, like a cat has a litter or a dog has a litter. You know. Um, did you ever notice in how people, in other words, some families can't have children, so they take fertility pills and so forth. The next thing you know, they have seven kids, <laughs> right? Well, don't, wouldn't you think that Eve was very fertile because of no impurities, okay? So when she had children, I don't think she just had one. I truly believe she had a litter. <laughs> I mean, she had to have more than one or two. She probably might have had six. She might have had four. She might, and let me tell you, she probably had more. You've got to remember, she was a healthy woman, wasn't she? She had no imperfections that would have brought down the line except for sin. Right? And, and the word tells us that she would have labor. But you notice how things are carried down the line for me and you because of all the generations of how our families ate, sins, curses, and so forth that were brought down generations. And it's affected me and you, hasn't it? In fact, look at how old Noah was, 900 years old. So people were, at that period of time, were living long, many, many years because they were healthy. The food was healthy, there wasn't pollution, the water wasn't polluted. I mean, the nutrients and everything, they were healthy. They were vegetarians, too. They didn't eat meat. Meat wasn't brought in until after uh, the flood, when God said you can eat meat. Of course, when he said you can eat meat, he shortened their life. <laughs> he said, from that time on, you'll be 120. <laughs> then you'll die. Does everybody get it? So when Adam and Eve had children, they had more than one. Now, we know that because the man was known as the head, most that you see written in the Bible, the um, generations, genealogy, was written because of their names. You see the men's names in there. You don't see too many of the women's names, do you? Okay? So when you had Cain and Abel, people think, oh, man, they only had two kids. Well, how can Cain go out and, and, and be worried about running into someone, killing them? Well, because when Adam and Eve had children, they had a bunch of children and didn't, didn't name the women. Okay? <laughs> All right. Let's go to Genesis 6 and verse 1. Now it came to pass when... Man, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. So we know that population had to be great. Now, listen, you may think, well, wasn't that incest at that period of time? No, it was not incest. How else was God going to populate the earth? And not only that, there wasn't all the garbage coming down from everybody's generations, was there? That would be considered incest and sin. At that period of time, that's how God was populating the earth. Because the Bible tells us that Adam was the first man. So there was no other man. I mean, nobody else was still hanging out here. So we know that the earth was populated, wasn't it? And women were born to them. Verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Understand this. The sons of God took women, okay? And they took for them wives, didn't they? And they most likely had children, didn't they? In verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. Now God was angry, wasn't he? For he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Now we know that didn't start until after the flood. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children, to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every in every intent, you gotta understand this, every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was angry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. From the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, birds of the air, for I am sorry that I made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Now understand this. God was angry, wasn't he? And he was sorry he created man because he created him out of free choice. Now I'm not going to get into, well, didn't God know this and whatever? That's a whole other teaching. He can choose to look into things and not look into things. That's his choice. He does it for a reason. So he doesn't interfere sometimes because he's a father, isn't he? 
Doesn't a father like to protect and do certain things for his children? So anyways, that's a whole other teaching in itself. But I want to get back to the part where we see here that the men, like I share with you in verse 2 that, well, in verse 1, in, in chapter 6, it says that the men multiplied and there were women, right? Now we know that we talked about Eve having more than one child. And then when their children had children, they had litters too. So the earth was populated. All right. Now I want to share with you what the sons of God represents. If you'll turn to me, Chip, to go to Job, sons of God, in the book of Job. In Job chapter 1. Sons of God. In Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Is everybody there? Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Let's read this together. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. Now where was the Lord? At his throne, right? So we knew he wasn't on the earth. So they had the crews up there. Could, so you knew man couldn't go up there. <laughs> Amen. And so Satan went up there to present themselves, present him. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? And Satan answered the Lord, said, from going to and fro on the earth. Now going to and fro on the earth means up and down. And from walking back and forth, that means being on the earth and going from north, south, east, and west. So we see that the sons of God were known as angels, weren't they? They were the angels of the Lord. These were angels, sons of God. So we see here that in Genesis 6, it says that the angels came down and went into women. Well, how could that be? Well, we'll talk more about that. <laughs> Hallelujah. We know that um, uh, in the book of, even in the book of Ezekiel, I'm just going to share this with you, and, and you can write this down in, in chapter 43, verses 7, 10, and 18. Um, the Lord never called anyone else son of God, sons of God, except for in the New Testament. In other words, if you were to look at Ezekiel, it says, son of man, prophesy. Everywhere in the Old Testament, you see son of man, son of man. There's only one place where it says sons of the living God. And that does not mean the angels. It means man, because if it's of the living God, it means of the living so, so many people get confused on that. They say, well, what do you mean? If I see it, sons of the living God. Well, sons of the living God does not mean sons of God. It means man of the living. Okay? Hallelujah. So we see here, in the, in the only other place that you'll see um, Jesus mention um, sons of God, and that's in Romans 8. And we'll turn there just so that you see, because this is New Testament, Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, and in verse 12. Romans chapter 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So you understand that the only way that this could happen is the pouring out of the Holy Spirit and being led by the Spirit because things were being restored, weren't they? For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption to whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So you and I are called sons of God or daughters of God, all right? In the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, the sons of God were known as angels. Were known as angels. All right, everybody with me? No problem, everybody okay? <laughs> okay, cool, good. Now, let's go a little bit further. Um, remember that the Lord removed Satan from his throne room, right? He said, okay, he lost his office. The Bible tells us that a third of the angels followed Satan in the book of Revelations. Should we go there? Why not? Hallelujah, the book of Revelations. Praise God. Let's do it. In Revelation... Chapter 12 and verse 1. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. In verse 3 of chapter 12. And another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadem diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars. The stars represented the angels sons of God. They drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. 
And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her son as soon as it was born. So Lucifer, Satan, took a third of the angels or sons of God. Okay? Now, they are not demons. They are known as angels, aren't they? Okay, an angel can't be a demon. Okay? Now, actually, <clears throat> let's go a little bit further. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. In, in verse 2, and it says, And the sons of God said to the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. So they had more than one wife, didn't they? Certain angels had to come to the earth. Well, how could that be? I mean, they were angels, weren't they? I'm going to tell you how that can be. An angel can put on flesh. An angel can put on flesh. And I'll show you that. Let's go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 13, in verse... 1 and 2, I think it is. In Hebrews 13, verse 1, Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained what? Angels. So strangers would be, they'd have to put on flesh, wouldn't they? So an angel has the ability to put on flesh. Now there's a difference between an angel that puts on flesh of authority of God and an angel puts on flesh not authority of God. They understand that. Okay. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm going to take you a little bit further here, okay? Um, now, we see here that these angels had offsprings, didn't they? In Genesis 6, it tells us that they had offsprings. And these offsprings were known as giants, weren't they? Some of them were giants. Now, let me explain this to you. When a husband and wife get together and they have children, do every one of their children look alike? No. So, do all of them have blue eyes? Do all of them have brown eyes, brown hair, whatever it is? No. In fact, are all of them males? No. Okay. So when these fallen angels is what we must call them. Remember, didn't we say that Lucifer knew, Satan knew that there was going to be a seed come into the world, didn't he? What, would, wouldn't you think that he would want to stop all the seeds from coming into the world? In fact, he did a real good job, didn't he? He did a real good job because he, enough of his offsprings were birthed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So we see here that an angel can put on flesh. All right. And these offsprings, some of them were giants, some of them were women, some of them were normal looking children, so forth. They weren't all just giants. Okay. Now, when these giants or when these offsprings came into the world, in fact, the word giant is a representation, the Greek word for giant is called titans. Did you ever hear the movie Clash of the Titans? The, in fact, it tells that they, in the word, it tells us that they even worship these giants. That's where they got the Greek names from, of Zeus. Those are fallen names. What was it one, Methuselah? Well, well, I don't know, the goddess of something at one time, or... I don't know. But they had one with all kinds of stuff. And this is where we got the um, myth of these um, gods and goddesses. Actually, they weren't really myths. I mean, they're myths in, in a way. But they, were, they came from somewhere. And it was because when these angels that were here on the earth and their offsprings were here at that period of time, they began to worship them as God because they were known as renowned. Now, what better way than Satan to turn away God's children from depending on them than to come and teach them other things. Now listen, the Bible is the number one book. It is the author, the head of everything. But there are books that have been written by our forefathers. There have been other books that coordinate with the Word, but you've got to be very careful, don't you? There have been records. That's where the uh, the, the book of Kings and Chronicles, those were all records, weren't they? In fact, there are books that, are, that our forefathers have kept. In fact, many of the books are even in the archives. At the, I don't know how you can get in there and see them, but there are many of them in there. In fact, um, Alex, let, let's go to um, the book of Jude. Go to the book of Jude, which is the last book before Revelation. Hallelujah of Jude. In verse 14, now Jude, a brother of James, who also was a brother of Jesus, okay? Now Jude, in verse 14, 
in the book of Jude, he writes this. Now listen. Now Enoch, seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with tens thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them and all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, who spoke this? In other words, he read this in the book of Enoch. Is everybody with me? It says, Now Enoch, this, I'll go back to verse 14, it says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also saying, now, you've got to understand something. This is many, many years before he wrote this. Jude. Jude was a, a brother of Jesus. Okay? So Jude was reading the writings of Enoch, wasn't he? And he put it in this book. He was reading the writings of Enoch. Now, I have a book of Enoch with me, and I want to read something from it for, to you so that you get a little understanding. Okay? Now, like I share with you, the major book is the Bible. I would never lead people to read other books and so forth, but you will find records in certain areas that will coordinate what's going on. Okay? So bear with me. I want to take the book of Enoch so that you can get a little understanding. And in chapter 6, now, Enoch 1. Like I said, don't freak out. Enoch 1 in chapter 6. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm going to just read some of these verses. In verse 1 it says, In those days when the children of men had multiplied, it happened that there were born unto them handsome and beautiful daughters, and the angels, the children of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said to one another, Come, let us choose wives for ourselves from among the daughters of men, and begat us. And now some of these angels that have strange names, which are in the book of Enoch, I can barely pronounce them, and Samaz, being their leader, said unto them, I fear that perhaps you will not consent that this deed should be done, and I alone will become responsible. In other words, they knew that they were going to put on flesh and go do this, and they knew it was going to offend the Lord for this great sin. But they all responded to him, Let us all swear an oath and bind everyone among us by a curse not to abandon this suggestion, but to do this. All swore together and bound one another by the curse. And they were altogether 200, and they descended into Ardos, which is the summit of Hermon. Now, it talks about Mount Hermon. Now, that representation, you can translate all of the Greek and Hebrew and whatever, and it represents. And they called the Mount of Armon, for they swore and bound one another by the curse, and their names were as follows, and they had all of these names. So all of these leaders came down, and it says about 200 of Satan's fallen angels. These are known as fallen angels who put on flesh, came in to these women and had a offspring. Everybody okay with this? Okay? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Praise God. I'm going to go to stay in the book of Enoch and go to chapter 8. Here's another angel. And as Now, these are the fallen angels. These are not the angels, the righteous angels. Remember, these angels put on flesh. Okay? And Azazel taught the people the art of making swords, knives, and shields, and breastplates. And he showed to their cho chosen ones bracelets, decorations, shadowing of the eye, with anonymity, ornaments, the beautifying of the eyelids, all kinds of precious stones, and all coloring textures. And there were many wicked ones, and they committed adultery and error, and all their conduct became corrupt. Amazras taught incantations, in other words, witchcraft, and cutting of the roots, and um, harmonious, the resolving of incantations, and astrology, and the knowledge of the signs, and taught the seeing of stars, and taught the course of the moon, as well as the deception of man, and cried, and their voice reached up unto heaven. In other words, there were some of them did not want to follow along, and some of them did. So understand this, when these angels came to the earth, they taught man all of these things. Like I said, what better way would it be than to turn man from God to rely on their own selves, than to teach them? Come on, they didn't know about fire, did they? How, how else would they know? How would they utilize fire? They didn't even cook meat then, did they? So here these angels taught them how to do weapons, how to how to get water, how to dig wells, how to do all of these things, how to build 
hunt, how to defend themselves, how to kill one another. Hello? <laughs> I mean, come on, Satan wanted everyone dead, didn't he? Because, but first he wanted to protect the seed coming in. So he wanted to come into all of God's protect the seed. Is everybody with me? Everybody okay? Okay. So he taught them all these things and they began to separate and not rely on God. Some of them began to cry out to God for help. Amen? Now I'll go to Genesis 6. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to. Because we already read this. At Genesis 6, it said that God was sorry he created man and their wickedness was all of their thoughts were intense of evil. Why? Because they were shown these things, weren't they? They were taught these things and they began to fulfill the lust of the flesh. There was no one... The, the, the righteousness was beginning to depart. Now, did they know righteousness? Yes, they did. How did they know righteousness? Because of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve taught their children. Now, come on. Adam and Eve were, what, 900 years old, whatever, 800, whatever it was, 600. And they lived quite a long time, didn't they? So don't you think they were had great, 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 I mean, you go on for a long time, grandchildren. And they would teach their children. But after a period of time, these after the uh, earth was multiplied, okay, then the angels of Satan, known as fallen angels, came. And they began to produce offspring. And the wickedness in their deeds. And they began to get further, and, you know, like generations, right? They began to get further and further and further and further away from God. And it continued. Amen? So we know that that's why God was so angry when he flooded the earth. Why? Because he had to remove the wickedness, didn't he? He had to remove the wickedness totally from the earth. So one way to remove the wickedness from the earth was to flood it. Now, um, after the flood, something happened. Because we still had giants on the earth even after the flood. Like, wait a minute, how could that be? God killed. Well, let's go a little bit further here. Um, the Bible says that, let's go to Genesis 6 again. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. In Genesis 6, we know the flood came, destroyed all the earth, and all the man in it. And in chapter 6 and verse 8, it says, But Noah found what? Grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now go to chapter 7 and verse 22. Somewhere around there. Praise God. Verse 22 in chapter 7 in Genesis. And it says, And all in whose nostrils was the breath of the Spirit of life, all that was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. Right? And the waters prevailed on the earth and so forth. Now, who was alive? In Genesis 9, turn there. Hallelujah. Genesis and verses 18 and 19. Is everybody with me? Let's read this together. The sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. So they brought wives with them, didn't they? Amen? Now it doesn't tell us too much about their wives. Now we know that the whole earth was populated. All right? Now we know that giants... I'm going to go to a book of Jubilee because I'm going to share with you how giants, and then we're going to go a little bit further, came onto the earth, came again. So let me first go to the book of Jubilee in chapter 10. Hallelujah. That's another one of these wonderful books. Now, the, I believe the book of Jubilee is in the Catholic Bible, isn't it? And the book of, uh, oh, there's a lot of other books in the Catholic Bible. Praise be to God. Maccabees, that's it. Okay, the book of Jubilee in chapter, hallelujah, as soon as I get there. Chapter 10 in Jubilees. Praise God. All righty. So we see that um, these spirits, or these giants or these spirits began to produce again on the uh, earth after the flood. Now I'm going to share something with you very important. God had to destroy the earth and remove the offsprings, right, of these fallen angels. Okay. Now we know that hell was a present place for the angels, basically, and, uh, and I'll show you about that in a minute. I want to show you about what these fallen angels represented. And uh, 
So after these offsprings were producing and God killed them all, something occurred. And God did two major things. As he killed all men, he did something with the fallen angels, known as fallen angels, these angels that came into the earth. And before I go to the book of Jubilee, I want to show, show you the, what happened to these fallen angels. Amen? Hallelujah. Now let's go to 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Yeah, I want to show you this before we go to the book of Jubilee. I think it's 2 Peter chapter 2 and verses, hallelujah, 2. On there. Now let's start at 4. Is everybody there? Now remember, the fallen angels are the ones that came to the earth, approximately 200 of them, and put on flesh, didn't they? For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. What happened to those angels? They were chained. And did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher in righteous, of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. So these fallen angels were chained in hell, weren't they? A part of hell. In fact, you can. I'll give you more reference on this. Um, in Jude 6, which is a book just before Revelation. So these fallen angels, God chained. Why? Because they put on flesh without his permission. Does everybody understand that? That's why no fallen angel, no angel of Satan will dare put on flesh. Because as soon as he puts on flesh, he gets bound. But that's why the angels of the Lord will put on flesh because they have permission from God. That's why you can entertain. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that Satan will be bound and chained, won't he? Why? Because he's going to put on flesh. Does everybody get it? In mid-tribulation, he's going to put on flesh. When he puts on flesh, the Lord's going to bind him. He's going to allow him to hang out for three and a half years. And then he's going to bind him and chain him for a thousand years. This was the warning from God. Go ahead. He said, Anyone who decides to put on flesh that's not been ordained by me will be chained immediately. Come on, they're not that stupid. Now, Satan, you know how Satan works. He first sends his angels to go get bound. You know, he ain't going to do it. He's going to go see what the Lord's going to do to them, right? <laughs> That's how he works. He's like one of those mosquitoes, a real pest, you know? <laughs> In Jude 6, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Does everybody see that? And Jude verse 6, I guess we could start at verse 5. And Jude first, verse 5 and 6. Jude. And it's, it's the first uh, book before the uh, Revelation. Last book before the uh, first. The book before Revelation. I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels did not, who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of of the great day. So those angels are known as the fallen angels. Fallen angels are angels that have put on flesh and went into the women. You don't see that happen no more because any angel that puts on flesh without permission from God will be chained immediately and thrown into hell. Amen? Amen. Now that we got that settled, what happened to those angels? So when the Lord destroyed the earth, the offsprings and all of them died too, didn't they? Hallelujah. <laughs> And um, when the Lord did that, he also chained the fallen angels. But, of course, all of this knowledge was at that period of time, and all people grew further and further away from the Lord. Now I want to go to the book of Jubilee. 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 Book of Jubilees. In chapter 10. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Now this is after the flood. Okay. Now listen to this carefully. In the third week of, the jub of that Jubilee, the populated demons. Hello? The populated demons began to lead astray the children of Noah's sons and lead them to folly and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah, their father, and they told him about the demons who were leading astray and blinding and killing his grandchildren. They knew about the presence of these evil spirits. Is everybody with me? Now I'm going to share with you what they were. And he prayed before the Lord his God and said, God of the spirits which are in all flesh, who has acted mercifully with me and saved me and my sons from the water of the flood and did not let me perish as you did the children of perdition because great was your grace upon me and great was your mercy upon my soul. 
Let your grace be lifted up upon my sons and do not let the evil spirits rule over them lest they destroy them from the earth. Now no one knew about this, did he? There were evil spirits known as demons. He was crying out to God for help. They were killing his grandchildren. But bless me and my sons and let us grow and increase and fill the earth and you know that which your watchers, watchers are a representation of angels, the fathers of these spirits, whoa, did in my days, and also the spirits who are alive. Well, how did those watchers, he's talking about the angels that went into women and ate offsprings. Shut them up and take them to a place of judgment and do not let them cause corruption among the sons of your servant. Oh my God, because they are cruel and we created and, and were created to destroy and let them not rule over the spirits of the living because you alone know their judgment and do not let them have power over the children of the righteous henceforth and forever. Noah was crying out to God for help because of these demons which were the offsprings of these fallen angels. Well, wait a minute now. That means that all the offsprings of the fallen angels when they died, those spirits, their offsprings are known as demons why they want your body and mine because they had one before and they know the lust and the desires of it that's why people drink smoke and party what's happening inside their spirits there and they want those things that's why when you get born again and filled with the spirit of god you no longer desire those things it doesn't mean that you're not going to be tempted does it and once you take the temptation that spirit has access to re-enter you again doesn't he does everybody get this Okay, now look at what he has. And the Lord our God spoke to us that we might bind all of them. And the chief of the spirits, Mastemia, came and he said, O Lord, creator, leave some of them before me and let them obey my voice and let them do everything which I tell them. If some of them are not left for me, I will not be able to exercise the authority of my will among the children of men because they are intended to corrupt and let astray before my judgment because the evil of the sons of men is great and he said let a tenth of them remain before him and let nine parts go down into the place of judgment and he told one of us to teach Noah all of their healing because he knew that they would not walk uprightly and would not strive righteously and we acted in accord with all of his words all the evil ones who were cruel we bound in the place of judgment but a tenth of them we let remain so that they might be subject to Satan upon the earth. And healing of all their illness together with their seductions, we told Noah so that he might heal by means of herbs of the earth. And Noah wrote everything in a book just as we taught them according to every kind of healing. And the evil spirits were restrained from following the sons of Noah and he gave everything which he wrote to Shem his oldest son, because he loved him much more than all of his sons. Is that powerful? That is powerful. Now we see here that because these e presence of these evil spirits were calling, causing sicknesses and disease, and the Lord said, okay, we're going to remove these spirits from them, and I'm going to show you how to heal the flesh. So he taught them herbs. He taught them how to heal and so forth. So God uses medication, doesn't he? Amen. So we see that the offsprings of these fallen angels that came into women are known as demons. And they want your body and my body, don't they? And we see how Noah cried out. Amen? Amen. Now, how did... Now, wait a minute. That still doesn't explain how giants got back on the earth. <clears throat> well, I'm going to share with you how. If you fi follow the family line of the three sons of Noah, is everybody with me? You will see that the family line of Shem, his seeds, ended up... Now, didn't Shem have a wife? Yes. Didn't they have children? Yes. His family line ended up to the father of promise known as Abraham. So Shem was the righteous line, wasn't he? Ham, okay, Ham was the line of giants or the Philistines and Goliath. Ham's family line ended up being the giants.
And Japheth, his family line, ended up being the Gentiles or the heathens. So we know that out of the three sons, one of them married an offspring of a fallen angel, didn't he? And the other two didn't. Is everybody with me? That's how. You know, so we see here that now the giants start to produce again. Giants started to produce again. Did you ever wonder why, how, man, you ever thought, man, the Lord was very, you know, he was pretty vicious when he, when he said, go out and kill everyone in that tribe. You know why? He was stopping the giants from reproducing again. Isn't that wild? Praise God. <clears throat> Let's go. Is everybody ready? I'm going to share a couple things about the giants that have come here. Let's go to Numbers 13. Let's go to Numbers 13. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 13. Praise be to God. And Numbers chapter 13. I'm just going to bring you to a few scriptures just to show you that there were giants on the earth and how God had to destroy them. And Numbers 13. <clears throat> and verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are all well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report, and of the land which they had spied out, saying, The, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are the men of great stature. There we saw the what? Giants of the descendants of Anak came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight. So we see that there were giants on the earth again because they were reproducing through the family line of who? Yeah. Ham. 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 Ham it. Okay. So we see that these things were happening, weren't they? In fact, God told Moses in the, about killing these tribes. And it was a constant. It finally ended up where David had to kill Goliath. and so forth. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord was destroying them bit by bit by bit. Some of them had six feet, six toes, and so forth. <clears throat> in First Chronicles in chapter 20. Let's go there for a second. First Chronicles in chapter 20. <clears throat> Praise God. First Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 4. Is everybody with me? Praise God. And verse 4. Now it happened afterward that war broke out in Gaza with the Philistines at which time Sabachia, the Heshetite, killed Sapaya who was one of the sons of the giant, and they were subdued. So we see that they were sons of the giant. Again, there was war in the Philistines, and Elahan, the son of Jar, killed Lamiah, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft whose spear was like a weaver's beam. So even Goliath had a brother, didn't he? Yet again, there was war at Gath, 
where there was a man of great stature with 24 fingers and toes, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was born to the giants. So when he defiled, when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, killed him. These were born to the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. So you understand that all of these things were about stopping the giants from ruling again. Now, I'm going to come to a simple close here because we can go on and on and on, and we can go to other questions. But I want to share, first of all, um, a couple of things before we close. Now, many people will come up and say, well, aren't these demons uh, wicked um, spirits of men that were left? Well, no, because the Bible tells us the wicked spirit of a man goes to hell. Okay? And you can look at it in Psalms 9.17. Now, some say, well, there was, wasn't there a pre-Adamic man? Wasn't man here before Adam? Well, the Bible says that Adam was the first man. And that's in 1 Corinthians 15.45. So, and then some say, well, weren't demons fallen angels? Well, they couldn't be because we proved that they were chained. So the only way, the true fact is that these demons are offsprings of fallen angels. Now understand this. Again, they want your body. They, they have, you know, just like you, you have an emotion, you have a desire, you have certain things because you're a spirit. Well, these demons want your body. In fact, Jesus came up to one man his, and when he went up to him he, the demons bowed down and worshipped him. And, and, the, and the Lord asked him what his name was and he said his name was Legion because there was 2,000 demons in him. And when the Lord cast those demons out they went into the pigs and all the pigs ran into the water and drowned. A third of Jesus' ministry was casting out demons because the Bible says in, Je in Ephesians 6.12 your fight is not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers of darkness wickedness in heavenly places. Your fight is not against man but against evil spirits. Now would you turn to Matthew 16 or Mark 16, I'm sorry. Mark 16. Hallelujah. So these spirits and well, can the spirit, and we have a whole other teaching on this, can the spirit, can one of these demons enter somebody who's a believer? Yes. And we have a teaching on that also. Hallelujah. They're no respecter of person. <laughs> Mark 16. Hallelujah. In verse 15. And he, Jesus, said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. What does the word believe mean? To follow. To follow. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out what? Demons. That's the first thing. This is Jesus speaking. Then they will speak with new tongues and so forth. Take up serpents. Drink anything deadly. Not on purpose. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover, won't they? So we see here even Jesus says the first thing that you'll do is cast out demons because Jesus' main ministry, a third of his ministry, was casting out devils. Why? Because the Bible says he was anointed to set the captives free. Well, who were they bound by? Demons. So understand this. Angels do not want to possess bodies. Demons want to possess bodies. Satan will not possess a body who will put on flesh. When he puts on flesh, he will be bound for a thousand years. Amen? Does everybody get this? I mean, we have more and more. I could go on and on and on, but I think this is plenty. You know, you can get an understanding. You have power over these evil spirits. Take dominion. Of course they're going to attack you. You know, we have spiritual warfare tapes and so forth. You know, if you need them, call us. We're willing to show you this. Everything is backed up by Scripture. It's all about knowing the truth. The Lord says, My people are, in Hosea 4 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know how many believers are walking around 
saying, well, the devil don't bother me. But look at their fruits. The devil's in them. Hello? Yes. Devils can take possession in an individual who is a believer. Now listen, just because you're not foaming at the mouth and acting real stupid doesn't mean you don't have a spirit. They can surf you. They can come in you. They can possess you. They can oppress you. But what does it matter? Let's get rid of them. <laughs> I don't care how. If there's an evil spirit there, it's got to go. That's why people fall into fornication. They go back and they stay under the rule of the world. Why? Who's the ruler of the world? Satan. He's known as the God of this age. And he said, and the Bible tells us that those who are not believing and walking the word of God are perishing because they're under the rule of Satan. Well, I'd rather be under the rule of Christ all the way. Amen? So praise be to God. Remember, demons, and demons don't fly. Okay? They possess people to get around. They walk the earth. They're here on the earth. And more and more demons are being released because God's allowing it, because he's allowing more wicked to be come out into the earth. Why? So that your light will shine even more. What better way to get man to come to the Lord closer than allow the release of wickedness more? See, wickedness must reach its climax and so much righteousness and the Lord will return and we'll be out of here. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We give you all the glory and honor and praise, Master. And Lord, let this seed be imparted and protected by the blood and let us know the truth that will set us free and carry the truth to set someone else free. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.